Today on Shop Nation, we get a little bit OCD when it comes to small hardware organization. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Nation. As you can tell, we're not in the workshop today. We're in my second workshop, which is my home office. By day, this serves as home base for my full-time job where I work for a 3D printing company. And then it also serves as the workspace where I do a lot of the design work and editing for Shop Nation, as well as the 3D printing I do for my own personal projects. And because 3D printing sort of overlaps both areas, I end up dealing with a lot of small hardware. Things like heat set inserts for adding threads to 3D printed parts, a whole selection of small nuts and bolts, magnets, pins, bearings, things like that. And in the spirit of pursuing shop greatness, I'm not overly happy with how I have them currently managed. So as you can see, as part of the desk build, which I did about a year and a half ago, I'm using these IKEA Alex drawers to store most of my equipment. Within these drawers, I have these small part organizers, which are basically tackle boxes. Now these do a great job of keeping everything sort of in their own little locations, but what I don't like is that when I open the drawer, I can't immediately see what I have and what I don't have. And then there's the extra step of removing that box from the drawer and then opening the box to get to what I need. Now this seemingly insignificant problem is something that not only plagues me with 3D printing, but could plague you with whatever you use your shop for. So for example, if you do electronics, all of the little capacitors and resistors and transistors are probably hard to keep track of, and having a visual system where you can immediately see what you have and don't have will likely make your life easier. Same concept applies here. So my vision is to use a series of boxes that fit within these drawers that make everything easy to see and easy to get to. So what I've done is designed a small box that I've 3D printed that accomplishes exactly what I want to do. Now the only real different feature of this box is this angled front so that I can label them and makes everything easy to read when I open the drawer. Now again, in my case, I chose to 3D print these, but it wasn't really for any other reason other than I had a 3D printer available. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can easily buy boxes like this and accomplish the exact same thing. If I were to calculate the cost of one of these boxes, boxes versus one that I could buy, it's probably about a wash. Again, I didn't do this to save money. I did this for the flexibility and the fact that I have a 3D printer here begging to be used. In total, all of the boxes that I printed represents about 200 plus hours of print time. And you might be saying, geez, that is not worth it. But here's the thing, of that 200 hours of print time, it represents about one hour of my time. And that's where you start to unlock the value of 3D printing, because this is basically a little robot factory that does whatever I tell it. A lot of people are obsessed with the concept of passive income, this is passive manufacturing. So it's cranking out boxes while I sleep, while I eat, while I work, and while I build other projects. Again, I'm a huge believer in the value of 3D printing, especially for a shop, and this is just one example of how I'm using it personally. So for my particular setup, I'm gonna choose to use three different color boxes. The red is gonna represent imperial units or freedom units. The blue is gonna represent metric units. And then the green is just gonna be for other. So for things like dowels, bearings, magnets, that's gonna go in the green containers. Now the next task is how do we label the boxes? I already talked about the angled front on the box, but to clearly describe what's in the box, we're gonna use a little label maker and just stick them right here. Now I played around with a couple different ideas and this turned out to be the fastest and easiest way to do it. The only other thing we have to take into account is Ikea's lack of planning in designing these drawers. So when I pull a drawer out, I can actually only use about 70% of the drawer. The rest is hidden inside the cabinet. So there's always gonna be a gap behind the containers and the back of the drawer. And what I don't want is when I open and close the drawer, the boxes are shifting around. So I'm gonna use a really simple way to sort of contain them so that they don't do that. For that, I'm gonna use some very thin poster board as the floor and then some 5 16 square balsa wood that I'm just gonna paint white as low profile barriers to keep them all arranged. So with the poster board cut to size and all of the balsa pieces cut to length and quickly painted white, we can start putting it all together. My inner OCD is really excited with how this came out. I love how they're color coded and I like how they're labeled so I can immediately see what I have and what I don't have. And what I also like is that each container can be pulled out to wherever you need it. So if I'm using 832 heat set inserts, I can grab that box 
and put it right next to the part that I'm using it on. Now again, if you don't have a 3D printer, that's okay. This same concept can be used with off-the-shelf bins that you can buy on eBay and Amazon. I did a quick search and found a couple really great options. Heck, you could even use Tupperware. If you do have a 3D printer and you want to print these yourselves, I'll throw up the STL files on Thingiverse that will be linked down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this project. This is something that I've wanted to tackle for some time now and I'm glad I finally got around to doing it. Some of you may be watching going, well, he went from organized to more organized. Well, that's kind of the basis of this whole channel, let's be honest. My intention with sharing stuff like this is to maybe spark an idea. Maybe you don't need something like this for 3D printing, but again, for something else that you do, there could be something you could take away from it. I'd love to know what you guys think. If you have ideas for improvements or things that I should have done a little bit different, please leave those in the comments below. I always get really good feedback from you guys. I will see all of you in the shop for the next project, but until that time, continue to pursue shop greatness. Shop greatness.